We have some new information to bring you about a search warrant in Donald Trump's federal election interference case. We've learned that Twitter gave the special counsel at least 32 of the former president's direct messages. The warrant was sought in January and was so secret that the social media company was barred from even telling Trump about it as the process played out. CNN's Caitlin Polance has this reporting and also with us is DOJ veteran and former associate counsel to President George W. Bush, Jamil Jaffer. So Caitlin, it all goes down in the DMs, as the young people say. What can you tell us about this batch of direct messages that the special counsel now has? Well, maybe it goes down in the DMs. <laughs> we don't know exactly who was slipping into D Donald Trump's right. DMs at that point in time, but we do know that there were direct messages. That was something we didn't know before, uh, that we had known through the course of some documents coming out in this particular matter that the special counsel, after they indicted him, then they were able to publicly disclose through the court system that they got a search warrant and they obtained information from Donald Trump's Twitter account. Now we have that number of how many DMs were handed over to the special counsel's office. Now in the indictment of Donald Trump, they don't cite any direct messages. And so we don't know exactly what these direct messages were, if they were from people, if he was writing to people. But the concern over this at the time in the court system was Twitter wanted to tell Trump that these existed right. because they wanted him to have the possibility to challenge them if they were communications between top administration officials. That ultimately didn't fly in the court. They didn't tell him at the time. The special counsel's office got the direct messages. How juicy they might be big question remaining there. And also the special counsel's office in these new filings that we're just going through had a lot of concerns at in April, before they charged him in both the Mar-a-Lago case and the January 6th case about how they perceived him to be so obstructive already at that time in April of this year toward both of those matters, outlining a lot of things that they eventually charged him with yeah. uh, under indictment whenever they were speaking to an appeals court under seal. Yeah, Jamil, what strikes me about the reporting is the fact that the special counsel uh, went to a point where they couldn't have Trump find out that Twitter was handing over these messages. Why would that be? Well, obviously there's a concern, as Caitlin was pointing out, that the president mm -hmm. would take action to delete these messages, prevent them from getting access. We know the claims that were made about the videotape, right. the attempt to delete the videotape down in Mar-a-Lago. The president, of course, recently has come out saying, yep. on a national interview saying, I didn't, I, didn't, I didn't direct them to do that. I had the right to, to fight it. I didn't fight it. We didn't delete anything. But the concern is that he would take action to obstruct the investigation. That's why they didn't want him to know. And now they have those messages. And of course, the president can still challenge it in court, challenge the use of them in court if there is something, there's some sort of privilege of the like. That was going to be my next question, if it could somehow bolster his defense. Well, you know, it could. Look, there, he, there might be evidence in there that actually helps him. We don't know what's in those messages. But on top of that, if he wants to push back and say, no, these can't be introduced against me, he's got that right. He didn't have to know about the messages beforehand to be able to fight them being introduced into evidence in court. And there's yeah. ongoing court action over whether Twitter what should have been able to tell sure. him about this search warrant whenever it happened because they couldn't. So I, I want to share a clip with our viewers of the interview that Jamil was talking about that Trump is doing with NBC in which he talks about that's alleged deleted evidence from Mar-a-Lago. He also says something really important in this clip. Listen. A new charge suggests you asked a staffer to delete security camera footage so it wouldn't get into the hands of investigators. Did it's you false. do that? It's false. false. But let me tell you what Would else. you testify to that under oath? I'm going to I'll testify to that. You testify to that under yeah. oath? It's a fake. The tapes weren't deleted. In other words, there was nothing done to them. And they were my tapes. I could have fought them. I, I didn't even have to give them the tapes, I don't think. I think I would have won in court. When they asked for the tapes, I said, sure, they're my tapes. I could have fought them. Caitlin, not the first time that Donald Trump has said he is willing to testify under oath. No. Remember when he said he was going to testify to the House Select Committee and then they subpoenaed him and he did not? This yeah. happened in lawsuits as well. The only time I can remember he's been testifying under oath is whenever he's forced to in a civil proceeding when he right. has to be deposed as a witness. So in this, he's saying he'll testify whether he would take a stand in his own defense. That's a big question. But what's interesting, too, about this is he says it's false when she reads back the allegation to him. Right. What he's saying it's false to and what the allegation is, is that he told someone to delete the tapes. Right. But then as he continues to speak, he's speaking about a different thing, whether the tapes were actually deleted, which we know they were not. Uh, and so the charge isn't about the tapes being deleted. The charge is about them talking about him and two other alleged uh, right. co-defendants 
talking and having this conversation, trying to get somebody to delete the tapes. Important distinction there. Yeah. Jamil, if you are on his defense team, are you letting Donald Trump anywhere near the witness stand? Well, not only not near the witness stand, not doing these interviews. I mean, this, <laughs> he is just walking him himself into all sorts of trouble, right? I mean, look, this is a client, obviously, his lawyers can't control. Yeah. And it works for him, though. Somehow, you know, he's managed to skate by every time. So, you know, even though his lawyers, any sane lawyer would advise him, don't go on TV, don't testify. It seems to be working. And he's saying in these TV interviews still, even with NBC and with Megyn Kelly yesterday, that um, he is able to have the documents, that he had the documents. Right. He's not contesting that. So all of this is very likely to come back. Yeah, uh, no surprise that when he talked about testifying before the E. Jean Carroll case, before that uh, civil lawsuit, before special counsel Robert Mueller, uh, written answers to those questions, not testifying in person. Jamil Jaffer, Caitlin Polans, thank you so much.